Good morning, 7.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast in the United States of America. I'm XRP, future millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan on this September 7, 2022 here on the East Coast, which it always feels weird to say on the East Coast in Michigan because we definitely don't feel like we're on the coastline. <laughs> we're on the East Coast of the Great Lakes. Um, but it's nice to wake up to the total crypto market cap at $907 billion. It's also nice to see the DXY continue to pump out of this area at 110, spot 64 approximately. The next targeted move up is 112, spot 914, 115, spot 207, my ultimate target of 120, spot 239 in my opinion. But if we had a capitulation style event where everything just went crazy, you could get up to 154, spot 52, and that would, if you get up to 120, spot 23, which I think you've already come high enough to where this will kill the dollar. But especially if you come up and capitulate to 120 spot 239, the US dollar is officially gonna go goodbye bye. And I had a valid question. What do we buy XRP in when it goes down? The US dollar. Because isn't that gonna affect the USD, USDC? And yes, it will. But we'll deal with that when the time comes because we certainly can't go in tether. So. It's gonna, that's an interesting question, but that's all gonna correlate in time. The one thing though is with the US dollar currency index breaking down, that gives crypto the green light to go up. So yes, our dollar value will be worth less, but crypto will be worth more, so take that for what it's worth. Um, right now, XRP's at 3227. Once again, I have not been able to enter this short. The short that is below 3186, because every time it gets below it, it didn't even come all the way down to 3129 and got it did not reject this area. And I've learned my lesson of not buying stuff before I go to bed. It's that simple. Because had I bought this, I would have had a nice rally down because I was gonna buy it right at 3186 last night at about 2100 hours, which would have put us about nine o'clock at night. And then I fell asleep. I had to go to bed earlier last night than I would have liked to. I usually stay up till two or three. I had to go to bed at like 11. Cause my, my son's got a neurologist appointment today from his car accident, so. And that was like three years ago his accident, but they're still checking, you know, cause he's a little developmentally delayed. And yesterday I had a busy day and you guys might as well know my life since you're watching me. Julia had her doctor's appointment for the other insurance company cause she's in a lawsuit from her ankle from the person who crossed the line and hit her head on. Um, she's had four surgeries on her ankle. She's had to get her talus bone removed. She, it's completely fucked up her quality of life. She can't walk without a cane, and even with a cane, barely can walk. Um, so she had to go to the other insurance doctor yesterday, you know, right before a settlement. They always make you go to their doctor so they can try to see if you're telling the truth. Um, but fortunately for her, her foot's so deformed now, and it's, it's a whole big mess. Um, but she's very strong. We don't talk about it a lot, but that's what's going on. So... If you get the up and down mental days for me, that's the reason. So the support is always greatly appreciated. Seeing one person a day join Tom's Army is all, that makes the world of difference to me. So if you wanna to join Tom's Army, I'll show you at the end of this video how to do that. And then also, if you wanna to subscribe to the channel as we're approaching 13,500 subscribers, I'd greatly appreciate that. 
And the only way to grow this channel is to share this on your social media. So share this to somebody who's never seen my channel so we can continue to keep the ball rolling. Right now, our most important thing this morning is to see if we can actually maintain this 3208. If we maintain this 3208 because we bounce back up in here, once again, if we hit a downtrending support anywhere at 3186, 3178, this can bounce back up and retest this broken drop point. Now, the one thing that I will say, and we have to pay attention to this, is the first drop to 3178. We came all the way back up to 3260. That is that resistance line right there. The fact we came all the way up to that, that is the bottom of the descending triangle. I mean, the ascending triangle, which is the extended bear flag. The fact we came all the way up to it, got rejected and pulled down even farther. The ideal thing where you could have shorted it last night is when it, if it would have come down and hit this downtrending support resistance line and then broke down. That would have been the perfect spot to parlay this into a beautiful short. Now, it's one of those things. If you're in the short, did you sell? Are you going to wait? Can it come all the way back up? Well, that's what remains to be seen. But right now, the volume's low. Right now, we're finally doing what we need to do. And we're starting to break down these barriers. A very common occurrence is coming up to the 100 or possibly 200 day here if we can get a 20 day hold on here on the estimated moving averages. And if you want to use the EMA lines I use, simply go type in Dr. Sweets EMA or EMA Dr. Sweets and do the 20, 50, 100, 200 day. And then I have also on right now the price volume trend, which I'll put back on. I think I took it off on accident. Or it's just not showing for some reason. It's on, but it's not showing. Or I put the EMA line on a bunch of times and not even realized that well, I've been showing everybody. So then you just go back. Oops. We'll go to the price volume trend. And I like the price volume trend not because of the little 4D graph, but I do like that as well. But it also lets me know the average volume in the area. So always make sure to pull this down though, because if that's up, it's not gonna show you on the bottom. So if you pull that down with the arrow where it shows the two, because that's your two indicators. If we look at the volume in the area, we've got 2.842 approximately on average, 2.86, 2.85. Up here, same amount, same amount. So we didn't pick up any rebound volume, which means we're probably gonna have to go down lower. Yeah, see, we're probably gonna have to go down lower. We're not adding any volume in this area, which means we're starting to sell off, but at some point, you're gonna get this alarming sell-off and it's a capitulation style, and that will break it down. And the same way I talked about the capitulation up for the US dollar currency index is the same way you can talk about the capitulation down on crypto. We haven't had that massive capitulation style event, and that's gonna happen, but it can't happen yet. We're gonna to have to break down that 2892 wall right now. That is the, actually, it's a little bit lower. 2874 if we break down 2874 that is the lowest support the lowest drop that it hit because it hit this uptrend on this ascending triangle bear flag so that is the last area of support we have to break the next move from 3186 on a retest if this back test this and does break out on a uh, bear flag to the downside which i'm being completely honest we could absolutely come up here and retest 3264 right now 100% that would be a great drop down and a valid retest here. But the moment we get through here again, I don't think it's going to come back up. You have a clear and opportune time at 3187 to short it down. This is going to be the one thing that's going to get in our way though. That could possibly slow this down. You got this downtrending support line that is kind of like the break point of bullish and bearish in this area. Where it could stay somewhat bullish and pop out of the area. But if it gets below this... A problem so when 3186 breaks you start shorting it but be cautious of this 3158 but it should come down except we've established the zone it should come down to 2988 it's a hell of a short there that's 120 plus percent on a 20x 60 percent on a 10x and depending on how much money you're using if you're spending 100 bucks well yeah a 20x might be worth it because then it's a two thousand dollar bet but if you're spending 500 bucks, there's no reason to up it to 20%. Yeah, you can make more money, but your liquidation will hit quicker and your minus will be faster. So I would highly advise if you're doing 500 or more to do 10X. That's still a $5,000 trade. Even at 250, do 10X. Or 12X, just so you have more room on the liquidation. But personally, I wouldn't do anything. I'd sit here and I'd wait on the sideline. This is a trading zone that is very unkind to people. 
even the ones who did decide to go short, a lot of them are back in an area now where they're like, oh shit, I should have sold it. Now what do I do? You don't want to be at 3186 holding the bag right now and not know if it's going to get rejected by that ascending triangle bear flag. So I focused on XRP. I focused on the DXY because I want you guys to be on the same page. That was 10 minutes worth of information. I would greatly appreciate your like, your support, because in this time in history, as XRP continues down the chain, you got one opportunity here, ladies and gentlemen. You can either listen to me, you can buy with me, and you can ride the way down when it's about time. Or you can humbly decline, go watch somebody else, and be on the gravy train like with Ethereum Classic. I heard so many people talk about Ethereum and Ethereum Classic with the new fork and the new update. News to everybody, Ethereum Classic isn't part of that update. A lot of people don't believe it, but it's true. There's a reason why Ethereum Classic went from yesterday, 42 bucks a share, and now today, if you bought it anywhere near there, you're down almost 20%. There's a reason why Ethereum went all the way up to our target, and then some of 1626, even went up way higher, because I thought it could make it to 1729 had it pulled up that high, but we talked about this across resistance that could have been the, the down, or the overall rejection point with ethereum and that's exactly what happened so then you start looking at this ethereum's on 160 bucks in one day 165 bucks that's 10 fucking percent for usdt now since the flip of the clock it's not as bad it's not as bad since the flip of the clock we're only down 80 bucks a share roughly at the bottom Right now we're down $44.04 per share, 2.83%. XRP's down 3.5%. Today's the day where you really are gonna have to pay attention because if we break down this next layer of support, and I know everybody keeps talking, we've hit the bottom. We've hit the bottom. We've hit the bottom, yes, I know, I'm aware. I just don't believe that's the case. Right now, DGB is using our resistance head. You have bought it here at 106 and rode it all the way down to the next support level. It's doing it exactly like you're supposed to as you break down levels. We used 1059 as the rejection, came down to 099 as the support for XLM. And now if it breaks this down, you have a targeted move, which will get us down to the bottom of the pattern. Fortunately, this is the move that would get us down there. Get you right down to the bottom. Of, whoops. Let's go from about there. Get you close to the bottom. Where would the breakdown about right now? It'd have to be a little bit farther. We'll say it comes over here. So the next move would get you down to 091. That is within a plus minus range of that bottom to where you could absolutely be looking at a touch, a touch at the bottom of this uh, pattern. And then DGB. At the bottom side, and look how these charts work out, ladies and gentlemen. So I know a lot of people say, oh, the chart, the timeline, and what timing. I do what works. I don't give a shit what everybody else says. My charts work and that's all I care about. Right now we've got DGB that fell out and we've got a heavy resistance at 097. If this back test is successful, DGB has a targeted move just out of this bearish continuation that was formed. And we'll just come up to here because I don't like to use it all the way down so we don't get caught. Our next targeted move on DGB is starting to get us down into these very nice areas of 0876. Our overall low right now is 0080. I will show you a bare bottom price, which might not even be the bare bottom, but 002 is where if we break out of this bear flag and this continues downward like this, it's a huge problem. XRP Future Millionaire, hit that motherfucking like button. And if you want to trade like me or join Tom's Army, you can do it like this and show me that support I so d desperately need, deserve, and desire. And if you'd like to uh, join Tom's Army, which would be greatly appreciated, read through this on my video descriptions. And it gives you a little statement of what we're doing here. And then you can donate. Join Tom's Army. Just click that. It'll allow you to join the Tom's Army. And you get the exclusive emoji bat in month one and the most exclusive an elusive subscription-based service on YouTube. That's right, in month one, you get me abducted by aliens. In month two, you get the emoji bags of Dusty's Outhouse Crypto News. In month three, you get the XRP meteor coming down to Earth. In month four, you get the predictor and so on. 
You also get the exclusive telegram with 229 people in there where we talk charts, hang out, and we try to stay ahead of this ever-evolving market. So, it's very, very informative, and there's a lot of reasons why you should be in here. 15 people online right now already at 7.57 a.m. And if you want to donate, you can donate XRP just like that. But if you want to join me over on BitGuide, trade XRP with no VPN in the USA. And you can also copy my trades by typing in XRP Future Millionaire at Copy Trading. Just click on that partner link, show me that extra support. I'd really appreciate you following Tom's Army, but at the very least, if you're going to trade, join me over on BitGuide.